Welcome to Dumping with Scrump, the return! Since it's been a few weeks since we've done this. Today there is, there is Scrump and Lilith. What's up, guys? Hey. How you doing? The cat is back. She, she has not left. She's still on the show. It's all fine. <laughs> all of you Gildic fans out there will be relieved. Yes. Yay! Uh, so today we're talking about, um, I mean, specifically Tumblr, but in general, just the fact that the internet seems to be going quite anti-porn recently. Well, there's a, a larger overarching reason for that, which I'll probably cover later. We'll be covering Tumblr, and we'll be covering the whole Foster and Sester. I think I'm saying that right. I keep saying it wrong. It's, it is Foster and Sester. They're the two supposed anti-sex um, anti trafficking regulations that are affecting a whole host of things on the internet and a whole host of things with sex work in general. But Tumblr is one of the latest casualties of this. I, I would like to refer to this as uh, the brand new age of the moral panic. Just when you thought it was over, just when you thought people grew up and realized that, you know, porn and masturbation is all good and healthy. Suddenly, we see a resurgence of Puritans from both the left and the right. Even if you do believe that pornography is somehow harmful, I don't think in a... In, unironically, we live in a society and people have the right to choose what they can and can't consume. So even if you object to it on moral grounds, I think you telling people what, what they can and can't view is again extremely authoritarian and I don't enjoy that. I, I think if you want to argue against it, you should argue against it on its principles rather than trying to outright ban it in many cases using very, very deceptive legislation that is uh, saying one thing and doing another. Let's begin by looking at this article from Niche Gamer. Now, uh, Niche Gamer is one of those sites that I think all of us really discovered during Gamergate, I'd say. They, that's, that's where they kind of made their mark as being one of the only... It, it's like Niche Gamer, um, Lewd Gamer, and Games Nosh. They were the ones that were actually willing to talk about what was happening in Gamergate relatively objectively. Um, so I th oh, Also Tech Raptor as well. Like They were basically these these smaller sites that gained a following by actually telling the truth. Well, Niche Gamer has been consistently good throughout the years, I think. Brandon Orselli's a very good dude. There's been some staff changes, there's been, a, there's been a few wobbles here and there, but they have been very consistent. And I use Niche Gamer quite a lot for my gaming news, so... Oh yeah, they're good. Well, Niche Gamer's article is Tumblr bans all pornographic content. This is on December 3rd, and I have a feeling that, um... Like, it, it, was, it was blowing up a little bit, the whole Tumblr thing. But then it kind of fell by the wayside with Sargon's banning from Patreon. That kind of knocked it. It kind of like knocked it out of, out of everyone's uh, collective consciousness because that seemed to be a bigger event. But this was still important. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, it was kind of, there was a whole slew of issues that happened at once with this. And I don't think a lot of people have really covered it particularly in depth. I would also like to point out, I like the image on the niche game radical here. It's the, uh, it's the angry, angry Bowsette noises one. <laughs> Tumblr has announced they're banning all pornographic content from their website. Beginning on December 17th, pornographic content will no longer be allowed on the site. The new decision comes weeks after popular artists focusing primarily on adult content were being suddenly banned from the platform. So, they they banned people first and then they made the rule later, it sounds like. A lot of this was panic. Um, as it goes on to later, a lot of it was panic due to the fact that the app was removed from the iTunes store by Apple who is in turn, I think, proactively reacting to some of the Foster and Sester stuff on the horizon. It kind of the shit's rolling downhill here. You want to mention something that's funny? It's a interesting coincidence that December 17th is also the International Day to End Violence Against Sex Workers. Wait, is it actually? So, interest yeah, it is. It's a, it's an interesting day that they pick. It's almost as if, uh, as if I f massive fuck you. <laughs> There can't be any violence against sex workers if sex workers don't exist. It's, it's gonna be like a Thanos finger click, isn't it? So here's the actual new rules. Is adult content allowed on Tumblr? It is not allowed on Tumblr regardless of how old you are. So it doesn't, it's, it's not like behind uh, an age filter, you just it's, just, it's just gone. So they define it as photos, videos, or GIFs. Is it GIFs or GIFs? It's GIFs. Is it? Okay. People say GIFs need to be gassed. <laughs> that show real life human genitals or female presenting nipples. Only female presenting what, nipples. What's wrong with male presenting nipples? Uh, this is sexism at its finest. <laughs> this is oh, disgusting. If, but but this, this gets into a whole thing. Like if you identify as, as male and you present your nipples, are you? Hmm, this is going to become a whole rabbit hole, isn't it? 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, like L Lilith, would your nipples count? I'm not sure. Well, let's just say that if I walk outside the door right now with, uh, completely topless, there's a good chance I would get arrested, so... Uh, it's, it's, it was so, again, it's, it's so absurd in phrasing, it comes across as almost like a joke. And anyone who's used Tumblr regularly in the past few years knows that what most people use Tumblr for is porn. <laughs> like, apart from the social justice bullshit, that was Tumblr's main vector and main audience. One of the funniest thing I've read was, uh, breaking news. Porn site bans porn. Yeah, I, I have no idea how they're gonna survive, really. Like, like if if that was their audience and they've just banned their audience, like, are they just gonna? Are we even gonna have Tumblr in a year's time? I don't know. Maybe I'll go away of MySpace if we're lucky. But then again, Facebook should have gone away of MySpace, but it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. We'll, we'll hold our, our our hopes out. A few weeks earlier, this was kind of heralded by a censorship update hitting the Android version of Tumblr where it turned on safe mode for all users, and you could not turn it off. So this was back on the 21st of November, and people started to say, oh, maybe something's coming, and it turns out that it was. I did notice that. I did notice there was a big, big push for the default filter. And even before this announcement, there was a pretty infamous um, purge of not safe for work artists. Oh, you want to know one more fun fact? Hmm? The Tumblr announcement that they were going to ban porn, that post itself was flagged by their own bots. Was it actually? Yes, it was. It was actually flagged as not safe for work. And as soon as the actual <laughs> filter came into place, a lot of people, like, the only people left um, circumventing the rules were the porn bots, and they got a massive amount of porn spam still. Like, it is, it is completely, it's not backfired, but it's completely just not worked. All you have to do is really just, um tweak the breasts or not safe for work um, colors slightly different so let's say like a green lizard with uh, with its tits and massive food dick hanging out that's still fine <laughs> as it turns out there are ways floating around to uh, to circumvent this sort of thing uh, this article is called owl picks here's how tumblr sensor bots are being fooled and it's quite literally just a guy took Something that was flagged as as not safe for work and not allowed. He added an owl with a hat on it. <laughs> it they allowed it, and apparently, um, here's somebody who's who tweeted about it. Users are testing the limits of Tumblr's new algorithm that flags adult content. This one found that a man's chest was flagged, but a man's chest next what? next to a 50% scale owl went unnoticed. So just add owls to your porn, guys. It'll be fine. Are those nipples female presenting though? We have to ask the question. They're trans nipple. Trans nipple. I, I see. Uh, <laughs> um, you could just get around it by saying that your your boobs identify as an attack helicopter. The the program that Tumblr's using it identified this picture from the Mars Curiosity rover. It's like just like a landscape of Mars <laughs> as being ninety six percent not safe for I work. Mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but that is a very very sexy Mars landscape. I, I, I think they're using... I heard similar stuff about China's adult content filter in that, like, pictures of pigs would be picked up by it and stuff like that. Like, they just go by hues in the picture. It is a very, very dragnet approach. Um, and it's not a very smart bot, as I would consider it. It is... Again, it's very weird Tumblr doing this, considering the type of website Tumblr is, but I, I think really this was a panic reaction to them being removed from the iTunes store. Um, again, it's a lot of the stuff like companies like Apple, Google, and the big tech companies how, hold so much power in this space that they can cause a website like Tumblr to panic like this and completely ruin their platform simply by their own, by policies that aren't their own. Speaking of that, Scrump, uh, this is from 2017, so it's not necessarily related, but it's still it's still funny. Uh, Brit, this is from this is on Gizmodo. British cops want to use AI to spot porn, but it keeps mistaking desert pics for nudes. And you're right, I think it's just like like various shapes and hues. It's like, that's probably porn. Oh, it does. That's the, that's exactly the way it works. I just want to say one thing about this situation here. Uh, send dunes. Send dunes. Oh, please send dunes. <laughs> like you said there, Lilith, the canary in the cold mine was in November when a whole swathe of artists were purged without reason. Yep. Artists have just lost their entire livelihood in one night. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, this is why you diversify. Yeah, this is why you go on multiple platforms. I One of the funniest things 
about um, about this whole thing has been a lot of the a lot of the counter art has been funny. A lot of the people drawing stuff about Tumblr um, and a lot of the these people like Newgrounds came back up as well. Yeah, on the on November twentieth. Uh, Newgrounds put out a tweet saying, uh, made a post welcoming all the new and returning artists to Newgrounds this week. Give it a read and learn stuff about Newgrounds. And it's just this massive influx of people who are like, where can we go? And, and like Newgrounds is like, this is my time to shine. Yeah, man. Like I remember when Newgrounds was new, you know, and I was, I was like, a, I was probably in, in grade school and, and in high school. And Newgrounds was one of the few sites that the teachers didn't know about yet. So they weren't banned off the school internet. So like my <laughs> friends and I would go there and, like play flash games and that's how we would goof off during school and then like as as youtube kind of blew up newgrounds just disappeared right and then it was kind of a ghost town for a while but it seems to be making a comeback now it's because it's part of the old internet i think yeah newgrounds hasn't changed all that much uh, over the years they changed from swf to uh, mp4 though which is <laughs> Which is ne entirely necessary because the SWF is a, a virus magnet, apparently. They've gone to they've gone to like HTML5 stuff, like the, all the modern internet has. Yeah. But I think that they're a, kind of a bastion of this old internet mentality of very easygoing, and I think a lot of those websites who maintain that kind of mentality might be seeing a resurgence. I think it's really worked in their favor the fact they haven't really modernized, as it were. They haven't become a social media site. They've stayed as an old-fashioned kind of content site, mm -hmm. which is. But honestly, I think what we need right now is I think a lot of the stuff like integration like we got with YouTube like Google Plus and all that bullshit is it's really gonna step backwards and what people really it's, want is a place It's so gi gigantic corporatized bullshit. It's just like oh we gotta care about the, the advertisers. We have to make sure we're family friendly Ugh. It is all bullshit and, and once again a large part of the problem comes from uh, the payment processes as well. Like, it, it, I think what's happened is that the payment processes have have pressured Apple and Google, who have then pressured Tumblr, who have then thrown out us off that platform. I think that's the pipeline we're going down here. And it always goes back to the financial sector and starts to go back to the whole Foster and Sesta uh, thing. It's been looming on the horizon for a long time, but it really came to a head in like April this year. But no one really paid much attention to it until its effects started being felt. Well, the problem is that all these payment processors have just way too much fucking power. I mean, there needs to be some kind of uh, antitrust thing to kick in with. Um, basically, PayPal and Stripe are like the two biggest payment processor, and if they, if both of those cut you off, and they often do work together to cut certain websites off, uh, you're basically fucked. <laughs> you are. Those are the two big online uh, payment processes, and the problem is as well, you have. Mastercard, which is, I know you did a great video about that, Dev, about the Mastercard situation. Oh yes, that one. Yeah, people seem to like it, actually. Let's actually talk about uh, the FOSTA SESTA situation. I have a, an article here from Vox. Um, a new law intended to curb sex trafficking threatens the future of the internet as we know it. And this isn't like a, an Obama holdover thing, this is from Donald Trump. Um, President Trump signed a set of controversial laws enabling state and federal authorities to pursue websites that host sex trafficking ads on April 11th, 2018. Um, Yvonne Ambrose of Chicago was in attendance. Her 16-year-old daughter was killed after being prostituted on Backpage.com. So it seems like there might have been a legitimate issue that they wanted to solve using these bills. It was, yes. Um, the problem is that a lot of stuff got bundled into it. It is not really about protecting sex workers at all. It's no. about criminalizing any Obviously kind of sex work, including like, just posting like nudes on the internet. It's very, very, very far-reaching. No more premium snaps? <laughs> it might look that way. So this is the thought audit at work, then. We can blame it on that. <laughs> not really. It very much predates that. But. The article talks a lot about prostitution. Which, by the way, we should legalize. Yeah, I think so too, really. Yeah, it should be legalized. But prostitution and pornography and and erotic artwork are all very different things. Yes, they are. And this, these bills tend to bundle them all together. A, a big problem comes in that when you get these bills, a lot of the Congress people don't need them. And they just see, oh, stop, you know, save sex... Stop tra sex trafficking bill. We can't vote against that. It's like having like the kitten and puppies bill that also, you know, like does a bunch of like illegal uh, appropriations and shit. And here's where we get to the stuff involving not just uh, sex work, but, but pornography. Um, for two decades, the internet has functioned in accordance with Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. 
because of Section 230, um, courts have a clear foundation for free speech on the internet. And, and because of Section 230, website owners and server hosts aren't constantly mired in endless lawsuits because somebody said something inflammatory on their websites. Without this clause exempting websites from liability for the actions of their users, most websites simply, simply couldn't afford to exist. So first of all, Section 230 makes me think that uh, websites, if they have this protection, should not be policing for speech, which is, I know, a wider issue than this video, but I wanted to bring it up. It is a very good point, yes. Uh, FOSTA and SESTA create enforceable loopholes in websites if they appear to be allowing prostitution advertisements. That sounds specific, but it's not. The bill's language penalizes any websites that promote or facilitate prostitution and allows authorities to pursue websites for knowingly assisting, facilitating, or supporting sex trafficking, which is vague enough to threaten everything from certain cryptocurrencies to porn videos to sites for perfectly legal escort services. Either they wrote a bill that's extremely sloppy and caught all this other shit in the dragonet, or they're going to specifically use this to shut down a whole bunch of speech. Oh, I think it's very, very specific, and I think it's very, very intentional from what I've seen. And yeah, I was going to raise that point. The big thing is that this holds website owners responsible for everything on their platform. So what we'll see is a massive over-response from people, I think. But we'll see this massive kind of overreaction to stop any liability. And this means that any kind of lewd content ever is a massive legal risk for websites. So they will just go away, they'll do away with it, like Tumblr has. They will just fucking purge it. How's Newgrounds going to handle it then? Because they're just, they're just going to keep going. And how's like 4chan going to handle it? Because they're just going to keep going too. The problem comes with enforcement. I don't think this is massively enforceable. I think the big tech companies though work hand in glove with legislators to the, to the point that they're willing to jump. <laughs> when the legislators tell them to. I think that there's not much resistance going on to this. I think it should be fought bravely in the courts by people like Google and Facebook. They should maybe, you know, some use of those massive financial resources they've got to make the internet a better place. But they won't do that. They will just roll over and take it because they want an easy life and easy profits and getting pornographic content off their websites actually makes them more advertiser friendly. I think a lot of sites like Facebook are going to use this as an excuse because they've wanted to purge that for a very long time, but people get upset. You're right, they should be fighting these unjust and, um, and horrible laws. But, um, they won't because, if anything, they're probably pro-censorship. They want, they want an excuse to be able to control more content on the internet. And, um, none of these big tech companies have any integrity. They don't give a shit about internet freedom they don't like, give a shit about free speech or free expression well the big thing as well i think about foster and sesta are that they will not do anything to combat sex trafficking in fact they will just drive uh, sex work further on the ground and make it harder for them to prosecute that that's the thing it's it's um sex workers being able to advertise their work online is actually making things safer for them it, they don't need to be out on the streets they don't they get to choose and vet their clients and uh, it's just much safer and less dangerous and, and it's actually better for everybody when they don't need to go um to be um street walkers because uh you know who who wants to have a, a bunch of uh skimp skimply dressed uh, hookers standing at their street corners and driving down the property value no it makes things better for everybody if escorts were allowed to advertise online but no, these, these people, these moral puritans, in conjunction with the, um, source, the sex worker negative, uh, ex no, sex worker exclusionary radical feminists who think, uh, sex working is, is, uh, anti-women and, and benefits men, so they, they don't want it, they want to ban it, and they, they, they think they know better than the women, so, you know. Well, it also lowers their, uh, sexual market value, too, if people can just pay them. It's like, no one wants to put up with your cat piss smelling ass, so they'll just hire a hooker. Yeah, so, so they, they don't like it. They don't, they don't like competition. They don't like the free market. Uh, it's the big thing here as well is, again, we, we see the way that a lot of this legislation, uh, it's kind of like Article 11 and 13 uh, in that way. It's very much an equivalent in that we have legislation meant to protect certain groups that ends up having 
massive consequences for other groups. Uh, whether in intentional or unintentional, I err especially on the side of intentional when it comes to 11, Ask 1113, and I also err on the side of intentional when it comes to Foster and Sesta. I really fail to see how this would curb sex trafficking, illegal sex trafficking, um, as in like human slavery and all, and all that stuff. Really, just 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 ask yourself, how is eliminating online advertisement and, um, and vetting going to curb modern day slavers? This is just moving on to a territory where it's punishing um, the average girl in college trying to pay her way through school. Online escorting has allowed uh, it an environment where girls can, and, and men, <laughs> and boys, can essentially work and not have to worry about like a horrible pimps and other gang members who will get them hooked on drugs and all, all sorts of horrible shit. I think I can actually answer the question of why they think this will actually help. SJWs in general have, have become the ruling class in a lot of ways. Not politically in the United States, but in politically in a lot of other places, certainly in academia, certainly in terms of where a lot of the wealth uh, distributions currently landing in society. I think a lot of them are like rich kids with trust funds, right? And they and they've enjoyed clean, gated communities. And they're as they're adults now, they're getting glimpses of the outside world and recognizing that well, not, the entire world is not a clean, gated community. So they feel a, a moral impetus to make the entire world a clean, gated community. And what that means is, if they're going to bring in, say, millions of migrants into Europe or into the United States they don't care because they don't have to live with them. They don't have to see the effects. They can just feel good about doing it. And I think it's the same thing with, with the sex worker thing. They, they can feel good about passing these bills. They can pat themselves on the back and say this is a good thing. They don't actually have to deal with the, the consequence of it because they're not going to be affected and they don't know anybody who's going to be affected either. So I think it's kind of the same mentality of just having this, this urge to, to, to be morally superior but not actually having to pay a price for it. Well, moral Puritans are moral Puritans, no matter what the, the political spectrum side they belong on. But the thing is, this bill is going to do the exact opposite of protecting sex workers, because it's it's going to brand the average person into, like, a, a sex trafficker. It's it's ridiculous. It's, it's also going to drive the entire thing further underground. The demand is not going to go away. There's always people going to be wanting sex. There's always be going to be people wanting porn. Making it illegal is just going to drive it further underground where it's controlled by uh, by cartel members and criminals. Well, it's not just that. It's also that it's the, they want to drive it underground because if it's underground, then they don't have to look at it. They don't actually care about solving the problem, though they, they tell you that they do. If, if they can put the problem out of sight, they will consider it solved. And the big problem here, I think, is enforcement of current laws. Like, the current enforcement of sex trafficking laws is woeful in the United States, I think. I don't think there's enough attention given to that. And the the idea of just banning it more rather than enforcing what you already have is a big problem that many politicians have. It reminds me of, of the situation with, like, firearms and mass shootings. That instead of getting to the root cause of why there are mass shootings and why there might be some sort of mental health crisis, or the fact that news glorifies people who commit these acts. All they do is like, let's just ban the guns more. And with sex trafficking, all they're doing is saying, let's just ban the sex more. And it's the same impetus, I think. It's the same kind of ban more mentality. That a lot of people, I, I think there was an argument to be made that uh, we should try and minimize sex work where possible. We should try and get people help, try and get people out of situations where they feel they need to do it if, they don't, if they're not particularly happy in them. I know a lot of people don't turn to that by choice, they turn to by necessity. And these are all arguments that need to be made, but they need to be made morally and they need to be made in terms of care for people. You can't just ban it. You need to actually deal with the problems that cause it. And maybe minimizing demand, whatever way that would, whatever way that would cause, I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible to remove that demand entirely, but I think there might be a moral argument to be made to minimize sex work from people who stand on that either religious or moral ground. But there's certainly not a moral argument to be made for making it harder for, the, for these people in terms of just their basic lives and making it a lot more dangerous for them. I think if you're a Christian conservative or you're someone like that who is morally opposed to this, you should look and say, how much harm am I doing to people? You know, you are not the good person in this. You are causing active damage to vulnerable people. And that is that is an act of, I, I, really, if, you, if you're doing it knowingly, if you know that this will damage things, you just don't care, you just want the problem to go away, you just want to make it harder for people to do this, no matter how much damage it causes, I, th I think that's amoral. I can, I can almost certainly guarantee you that this, uh, this is going to cause more harm, not less, way more. 
So here's here's a question for you both then. Um, Tumblr has completely banned all n lewd content. Who do you think is next? Well, we can talk about a few other people. For example, um, Google Drives started started deleting porn off of people's uh, accounts without telling them. Like that happened last March. Studio Fow was banned from uh, from Patreon. That happened about a month ago. Basically. It seems to be happening on all fronts at this point, and the only ones who aren't stepping in are Newgrounds and 4chan and, and 8chan, and I think they're actually going to uh, see an uptick in their users because of it. There is something called the Kink Rebel, where they are, it's supposed to be like a Patreon alternative for, I guess, porn artists and like uh, porn people in general, but there's also a problem with like, um, the payment processors. This is the whole thing with them. Why, why don't you make your own websites? Why don't you make your own payment processors? Why don't you make your own internet? And it's... Why don't you make your own government? No, wait. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, saw, I've seen that, uh, that comic. I think a lot of these alternate platforms could probably just bite the bullet and use the same payment processor that Pornhub uses. They, they might take a, a larger cut, but if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. Isn't Mr. Kermit and, uh, and Dave Rubin making um, their own sort of payment processor slash Patreon type thing. Are, are they doing that? They are, but like if, if, they're, if they're gonna have any success, the, the payment processor problem still has to be solved. Um, apparently Subscribestar is back up and running because Payoneer is actually working with them. So they, so like they're, they're like people are getting money through Subscribestar again through Payoneer. So there is a way out, but I mean, how long until somebody cracks down on Payoneer to tell them to stop doing that, right? There's an article here from Motherboard from back in June, June 28th. Uh, Patreon is suspending adult content creators because of its payment partners. I think we've kind of been through a lot of this in the, in the previous stuff. A lot of it is retreading ground. But again, it is the same kind of deal that we need to look at as a, as a bigger picture here. These two are linked. That the suspending of alternative content creators and adult content creators and any content creator that basically a payment processor deems unmarketable are linked. This is the same thing and I think people need to fight it as one together. I think it needs to be presenting a united front against people like PayPal, like MasterCard, like Patreon and tell them that this is not acceptable. I think the problem is that we're fighting a lot of very small, like a lot of fragmented battles when really it is one big battle. I should just say, um, fuck censorship and uh, fuck Puritan bullshit and... <laughs> Porn is good. Masturbate more. Love you. <laughs> masturbate more? Yes! You should always masturbate. Lilith, my dick sore. No, you need to masturbate more. Sounds right. Sounds about right. I just have to ask, how many how many empty energy energy drink cans do you have on your desk, Lilith? Because I always hear things rolling around on your end. Right now? Two. Are the cupboards still full of burst cans when you put them in the freezer? No. <laughs> wait, wait, you put energy drinks in the freezer? Sometimes when I'm in an emergency for energy. I drink smoothies now for energy. Kale smoothies. Nice. Fag. I'm actually getting in shape, though. Fag.